Welcome to today's Making Meaning lesson. My name is Mrs. Burgess. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Bravi Thompson School. We've been using nonfiction books. Uh, these are books that have true information about people and other things. We've been talking about what you're learning, how you make connections to nonfiction books, and we've been exploring parts of nonfiction books that give us more information. During this lesson, I might ask you to turn and talk. If you do uh, a turn and talk at school, usually we have someone very close by that we can just turn and talk to. At your home, if you have someone that you can turn and talk to, you might use the language that you're the most comfortable using. Maybe you might use the language that you usually use at home. Um, you can pretend to use a phone. I can, you can pretend to call Mrs. Burgess like this. You might have a toy or stuffy that you can turn and talk to. And if you don't have anyone nearby, you can do Mrs. F Burgess's favorite thing, which is to whisper to your hand. All right, so uh, get ready for turn and talk when it comes up in our lesson. So we have been using this book for the last uh, lessons. This book is called Getting Around by Plane. Can anyone remember what we've learned so far in this book? I hear someone say that we learned that uh, planes can land um, on the water or on a ship or on a runway. Yes, I also heard that some people can work on an airplane. That's really true. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at one really, really important part of this book. One really important part of this book is the table of uh, contents or a contents page. Uh, this gives us information about what and where things are in a book. So it tells us, uh, I'll go ahead and read some of the chapter headings. Getting around by plane, page four. What planes carry, page six. How planes fly, page eight. Working on planes, page 12. Where Planes Fly, page 14. So I'm wondering what parts of the book would you like to um, hear? Okay, someone would like to know about getting around by plane and we know that that starts on page four. Getting around by plane. Every day people move from place to place. Have you ever flown in a plane? Um, what was it like? Go ahead and turn and talk to a partner now. I heard someone say that yes, they had been in a plane and it was a little bit scary, but it was really fun too. Sometimes if you hear an idea that you also thought about, you can give the me too sign. All right, and I hear someone else also, they would like to know how planes fly. So let's read that page. How planes fly. Planes have engines to help them fly. Planes have wings to help them fly. Have you ever heard a plane engine? What did it sound like? Go ahead, turn and talk to a partner now. I just heard a student say that the plane engine was really, really loud. That even when they were inside the plane, they could hear the hum of the engine. Yes, all right, and then let's see. I also heard someone talk, oh yes, about uh, where the planes landed. Yes, so uh, let's see, this page says, Planes take off on runways and planes land on runways. So have you ever seen a plane take off? Have you ever seen a plane land? What was that like? Turn and talk now. I heard two things. 
I heard some students say that when they landed on an airplane, it was very smooth. And then I also heard some people say that when they landed on a plane, it was very bumpy. Yes, a student also said that when they went to the airport to pick up their grandma, they saw an airplane land. Now, let's go ahead and look at um, a, a thing that we have in nonfiction books called a label. And a label helps give, a, give us more information about a picture. I'm gonna show you this picture, and this picture has a label, and the label says cargo. And then, how would you explain cargo to another person? Please turn and talk now. Just think about this picture and think about what information does this label give about the picture. And turn to talk to someone now about how you would explain the word cargo to another person. Turn and talk now. Yes, I heard someone say that planes carry cargo and cargo are things that need to be moved from one place to another. That's a great way to explain the word cargo to someone. And this label tells us that this is cargo going into an airplane. The label gives us more information about the picture. So let's go ahead and look at another uh, page. And uh, this page has another label. Now remember, labels give us more information about the picture. The heading for this page is how planes fly. This is the label that tells us more information about this part of the picture. Let's read the words. Planes have engines to help them fly. Now, how would you explain to another person about what an engine is. Let's go ahead and uh, turn and talk now. And we'll have someone share what they're thinking about, about how they would explain to someone what an engine is. I heard someone say to their partner that an engine is something that makes the airplane go. Someone used the word motor. Yes, the label engine on this picture gives us more information. Let's look, an, uh, look at another label. This is another label. This says wing, and it's pointing to this part of the airplane. The label gives us information about this picture. I'll read the words. Planes have wings to help them fly. So how would you explain to someone what a wing is? How would you explain what a wing is? Turn and talk to a partner now and talk about what a wing is. Oh, I heard someone say something very interesting about how they would explain what a wing is to someone else. They said that a, the wing on an airplane is like a wing on a bird, and wings on birds help them fly. So we might tell another person that a wing is on an airplane and it helps it fly. Great job sharing your ideas about airplanes and thinking about labels giving us more information about the pictures on the page. Great job. Let's talk about some important words that we're going to need to know about while, read, while we read this book, Getting Around by Plane. Um, one of the really important words that we might need to know is the word depart. Let me read this um, page of the book to you. Planes take off on runways. When a plane takes off 
from a runway at an airport, they are leaving the airport. They're departing the airport. Now, people depart from places all of the time. Um, we depart uh, from a grocery store, like this family. They're leaving the store by going out the exit door. They're leaving a place, and we can say that they depart the grocery store. Now, students depart their classroom during the school day uh, many times. One place that we might depart to is we might depart the classroom to go to the library. I'm wondering what other times during the day did you depart from your classroom and why? Please turn and talk to a partner about what parts of the day did you depart from the classroom and where did you go? Turn and talk now. All right, one, two, three, back to me. When we share our ideas about when we departed from our classroom, let's go ahead and use this sentence stem. We departed from our classroom when, and give the reason why or where you departed to. Let's hear some ideas from your turn and talk. Yes, uh, a lot of people said, we departed from our classroom when we went to recess. A lot of people said that. Uh, let's see. Another thing I heard was, we departed from our classroom when it was lunchtime to go to the lunchroom. Mm -hmm. Yes, another, oh, so many people said, we departed from our classroom when it was time to go home. Those are great ways to use the word departed. Thank you for sharing. Another word that we're going to read and think about is the word land. L to land means to come down from the air f to the ground or to the water. So I'm going to read um, a, a couple of the pages to you. Planes land on runways. So planes land or come down from the air to a runway. I want you to listen for other places that planes land. Planes land on water. Planes land on ships. So let's think. We can um, use this sentence stem to think about where planes land. Let's think about where planes land using this. Planes land on... I heard one person say, planes land on water. Yes, that is one thing we just learned from the book. And another person said, planes land on ships. Yes, planes land on runways. They can run, land on water. They can also come from the air and come to the ground by landing on a runway. Now, let's look at this uh, word card. This says land. These children are on a a playground uh, structure, a play toy, and they're coming, they're jumping down from the air onto the ground. They're landing on the ground. So what's this word again? Land, exactly. So I want you to close your eyes and picture in your brain as I read you um, just a little short story. I want you to make a picture in your brain well, I say these words. I want you to pretend you are a bird. You're soaring high above a city. Your wings are tired and you're looking for a place to land. Where would you land and why? I want you to think about it like this. I land on because Remember, you're a bird. You've been flying high above a city, 
and now you're looking for a place to land and you're thinking, I land on because. Go ahead and turn and talk. Share with the partner your idea about where you would land. I heard one of our friends say that they would land in a tall tree. So they might say, I land on a tall tree because it's nearby. I heard another friend say, I land on the playground because it might be fun to be there. I heard another friend say, I land on a field because it's safe. Those are great ideas. And now it's time to think about your independent reading. Your independent reading is a job that you should do every day. When you're doing your independent reading, I do want you to look at a nonfiction book and really think about the information that you're getting from the pictures, the photographs, and from the words. Think about um, and wonder about all of the th information that you're getting from a nonfiction book. And remember that labels help us learn more about a picture. The contents tell us where uh, information is in the book. And um, sometimes we can also uh, find a information that's very surprising. So again, think about what you're learning from pictures and the photographs, what the pictures and photographs make you wonder, and also what's very surprising about what you're learning about. Um, you're going to uh, read and then you're going to write and draw about what you were thinking about while you read. Um, I'm going to show you um, how that will look. I picked a nonfiction book that I was very interested in. I picked a nonfiction book about stars. Uh, I noticed that in this book, there were labels. And this picture is labeled with the words, the sun and the earth. And it also had the words, the sun is, closest, is the closest star to the earth. Um, and I really um, liked the labels in that because it gave me a little bit more information. Now, the most surprising thing to me that I found out while I was wondering when I was reading this book was this page and it said stars can be different colors so this is the nonfiction book that I read and then I was wondering about it and I really um, noticed the labels in there and then I wrote about it now when I wrote about it I used a form that I my mom or uh, a friend printed for me um, from the packet that I can get from school or online. You can also use a composition book and a piece of paper to do your writing and drawing. Here's my page. And here are the instructions. It says, read or listen to a nonfiction book. Think about the pictures or photographs. Write and draw about one of the questions below. What did you learn? What did you wonder? What is surprising to you? Talk to someone about your work when you are done. The one important job too at the top is the title of the book. Then here's my picture and here's my writing. I learned that stars can be different colors. I wonder why that happens. So then I drew pictures of stars that were different colors. So um, that is your job today. You'll get a nonfiction book and write and draw and tell something about somebody about your work. If you do not have nonfiction books at your house, you can always go to the Seattle Public Schools website, go to seattleschools.org, select the student portal, click on academic tools. You might go to the Tumble Books Library or to Pebble Go. 
You can also visit Scholastic Learn at Home to get nonfiction books to do your independent reading. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.